This video is for people who've seen the Enrich Number Plumber and you've watched our introductory video and now you're ready to start building some examples of your own. So Charlie, at the bottom right of the screen you can open up the Example Builder and that gives you options to set everything up. So shall we start by setting up some numbers? So on the right hand side you can see we can have some drag and drop numbers at the top of the screen. So would you like to configure that? Right, I think I'll go from negative 10 to positive 10. And those have appeared at the top. You can also choose your precision and whether to use degrees or radians. And you can choose to add special numbers if you like. Alright, I'll add pi to my list. There it is. And I think instead of working to two significant figures, I'll choose two decimal places. OK, once you've set up your numbers then, you might want to set up some inputs. So let's have a look at the inputs that are available. I can choose to have drop inputs, where I can drag in those drag and drop numbers. Decimal inputs, where I can type in a decimal. And then I can have an integer where it steps up, and I can choose the range from that. Or a random integer, where the computer chooses between the range I specify or a random decimal where the computer chooses a decimal between the range I specify. Right, I'd like to be able to use the numbers that I've selected, so that would be the drop input, but I might want to have random integers, so I'll include that as well. OK, and those have appeared up at the top of the screen now. So now you need to choose some operations to set up. So we've got some binary operations to choose from. Plus, minus, divided by, times, right, I'll choose plus, and what else was there here? Over, which gives you a fraction, and the power. Okay, and as well as having the binary operations, we've also got some unary operations that we can choose from. Negate, square root, square cube. Uh, there's quite a collection here, including some trigonometric functions. OK, I don't think I'll use any of these this time. OK, once you've set that up, then you can start building some functions. So, shall we build a function? Let's have our input. How about we start by squaring it? So we're going to take our input, raise it to the power 2, and then let's add, let's just add 1 to our solution. And you'll need to <coughs> choose an output from the outputs panel. So there's our function f, just check that it works. We start with 10 and square it, then add 1, we should end up with 101. Great. OK, now that we've made our function, we can actually define that so that we can use it again elsewhere. So if you click on define, then with the rest of your operations, f has now appeared as an option that you can use. So let's build a function using f. So we can drop an input into f. This time the output's going to be g. And since that's all we're doing, it should have the same effect as what we've got here on the left. So let's just check it out. Input of 10, output of 101. Brilliant. So this is really useful because we could use f in other functions and explore how functions change when you add things or multiply by things or you can even use it by hiding the original function and using it as a way of working out what the original function was. So if we hide the things that we used to build f then we could explore what f does by dropping things into the function on the right hand side and see if we can work out what's going on. So students might try different inputs, keep a record of the outputs and then try and predict 
what's hidden here. And then one other thing that you can do with hidden functions is you can get the computer to drop a random in integer in and then look at the output. So should we try that? Okay, so we're going to remove this and we're going to replace it with our random integer. Mm 